Talk Media. Today we're taking a look at a game management system and the idea of that is um, it's going to manage some doors, it's going to manage uh, switches, it's going to have a switch counter and they will all interact. So when I first enter the scene I come in through a door that is now on the open animation. Um, you can see also in the scene that we have a door that is actually closed here and then we have a switch and then we have a switch counter and the switch counter is showing that we have one switch that still needs to be activated so when I go ahead and I trip the switch here I'm gonna bump into it, it's just got a collider on it you can see now the switch counter goes to zero and you can see that the door switches to open at this point uh, let's go ahead and reset this we'll show you some other things that are going on um, at the same exact time here so with the game management system it also makes it so that um, I can't actually leave this level without tripping that switch so I'm gonna go ahead and jump over here and navigate the best I can here um, there we go and I get over here and you can see this door is locked and I physically cannot even enter into that door area now once I get the switch I trigger that now I can jump up into this area and I can go ahead and click a key of my choice and I can go to any level of my choosing. So uh, you want to go to the next level, you want to go to a windscreen, um, whatever it may be, that's uh, what you can set up with this. Let's get started with this process. Uh, before we go um, importing anything for some of the custom packages that I created for you here, um, I'd like to um, get rid of a few things. Um, if you've been following this tutorial series from the beginning, uh, you've got a number of these scripts already, but I've since updated them. And I just want to make sure that you're getting the most recent updates for your script. So um, let's go into our assets here. And in the asset folder, um, underneath animations, let's go to the door animations. We're going to go ahead and delete that whole folder out of there. So I'm going to go ahead and click delete. And then I'm going to go into the controllers and I'm going to get rid of the door controller. So I'm going to choose the door controller. Make sure that you highlight the object, otherwise it'll delete everything. Kind of annoying in Unity. You can't just right click on it and have it go. Um, and then from there, let's go to the scripts folder. We've got a few scripts that I've updated um, that you have already, but they won't be effective. Let's uh, select the door one and delete it. And delete and let's go ahead and take the game manager and delete that and then there's one more we're gonna grab the switch script which I've updated now and we're deleting that And this is just getting you all prepped for the custom package that I put together for you now if you go to the um, if you go to the download link in the description you'll be able to get the custom package that I'm referring to and it's called game management and um, right now you're just gonna wanna import that game management script and I'll just walk through those steps I've already downloaded it here so I'm gonna head over to my assets I'm gonna go to import package and custom package and now I've got game management right here is the unity package this is probably gonna be in your downloads so um, and then click open and once we've got this um, brought up here, we are going to um, bring in all the door animations. We replace those. We've got a door controller, and then we've got a door script, a game manager script, and the switch. And we're importing all of that. So let's go ahead and click import. It should repopulate those folders and create them for you so that you're all up to date with everything that's going on. Now, I feel more confident about your script working and everything going and meshing well together at this point. So our first step is to go ahead and create an empty object that becomes the game manager. And um, I've still got my game manager on here. I'm just going to delete it out of there real quick. And here we go. So let's go up to create and create empty. We're going to call this empty object game manager. All right. Now on this game manager object, what we want to do is we want to get the script. So we're going to go ahead and drag that script on here. And uh, once we've got the script on there, you're going to see that the script requires a few things. And these are the things that we're going to have to create um, to make this all work together. So these all are interrelated um, elements that we're adding into our game. So um, got to bear with me as we go through this. Um, you're going to get a lot of errors to begin with if you don't finish this up. So we've got our game manager created let's go ahead and start creating our first switch UI now um, remember I had the counter that was up here you can see the switch 
um, count. You can see an icon of the switch. That's what we're going to create now. Um, I'm going to go to my UI or my canvas here. And on the UI, I'm going to go ahead and create um, an UI and an image. There we go. And this image, we're going to go ahead and change it. Uh, we had imported some sprites from GameArt2D. You can reference those now to find one that you like, or you can create one of your own. And I'm going to go over to my select sprites here. Smallest window ever. And I think, uh, not that one. 32, 31, 33. That's one of these in here. I think this one, yeah, 35 should work. So I'm going to go ahead and go with window 35, whatever you want here. This is just my background that I'm creating right now. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, and now I'm going to call this image switch UI. And I'm going to be working in this space here, adding on to this. And um, let's go ahead, and we're just going to add a few things in here, and then we'll get it all resized at once. Go in, we're going to, I right clicked on switch UI went to UI and now I'm adding in some uh, text and this text right away we're just gonna throw a number in here for the text let's make it 10 uh, make it at least double digits so that you can size it in there it's not likely that you're gonna have over uh, over two digits for the number of switches who knows though um, so I put 10 in there and now I'm going to call these text switch count and we're gonna be using this um, to keep track of everything and then uh, let's uh, throw in one more thing. I'm going to go back to the switch UI object, and I'm going to go to UI. And in here, let's go ahead and add another image. Now this image is actually going to be my um, icon. Okay, So I'm going to go to my sprites, and I'm going to bring up my objects. And I've got all these switch objects in here. And uh, let me go ahead and click back on my image here. And I can go ahead and, this is another way you can replace the objects. I can go ahead and just drag in the sprite that I want to use. So now I've got that switch icon in there. And it, it is all very ugly at this point. Let's rename that layer. And then we'll get to making this look better. Let's go with switch icon. There we go. All right, we got the basics put together. Let's start with this. I'm going to zoom out, get to my UI layer. And um, I'm going to just zoom in here, get it all pieced together, and then we'll transform it over to where it needs to be. All right, so let's start with the actual Switch UI background first. We're going to go, well, let's drag all of this over so that uh, we can size it according to our health bar, since that's kind of our reference point already. I'll just move it over into position here, and we'll get zoomed back in. All right, so on the Switch UI, this is our background. Let's resize that so that it's roughly the same height as our current background that we're using for the text. And let's go ahead and match those up here. And I want to get this wide enough so I can fit the icon in here and the text at the same time. So let's go to the Switch counter, and let's resize this so that it's over on one side of the background right now and I'm just fitting it into the blue area and while I've got that selected I'm gonna go ahead and align this to center and then I'm going to put it to the middle of the line and now font size let's go ahead and dial that up so we can see actually what we're doing here and um, I'm gonna just change the color because that dark gray is annoying I'm gonna put it all the way to black and now last thing let's go ahead and get our switch icon and this is all stretched hideously anyway. So let's get this first into the parameter so it looks like it's sitting right in the box there. Then we'll narrow that up till the dimensions look about right. Now we've got a little bit of room here still for all of this. So I'm going to take my background and slide that over. I don't need that much space. The more I can condense this stuff, the more I can uh, keep things visible for my game. So I'll switch count. I apologize, I'm kind of rushing through this, but I think you're getting the idea. And of course, you can customize this however you want. And there we go. That's looking pretty good. So I've got my switch UI created. 
and there is one element out of here that I'm actually going to use and that's my switch count and this number directly reference is referenced for the number of switches on the layer so I'm going to go back to my game manager object and I'm going to select that and in there you can see there's a switch count right now um, it's looking for some text to put in there and I want to go ahead and add that in so let's grab switch count drag it on in there and we've got one of these things populated. Okay. Um, now, let's go ahead and add on the next part of this. Okay. So we've created the GUI for this, but it's really not going to do much of anything until we create the switches themselves. So um, that's the next thing. Let's go back to my scene here, and I'm going to um, create an empty. And actually, let's not create an empty. Um, yeah, let's not create that empty. Let's go right to our sprites here and drag this in. So I'm going to go to my objects, and I'm going to take the deactivated switch. Now, chances are uh, you may have different switch icons. You may have created your own switch icons, however you want to do that. But um, for this particular tile set, there's a green and a red. And uh, you would like to have a switch that kind of is noticeably different so that you can tell when it's active and not active. Um, so that the player knows what to interact with here. And um, let's go ahead and drag this in. And now I don't want this to be part of the game manager. I want it to be its own item. Right away we're going to go ahead and we're going to call this switch. Like so. Now this switch is going to be a representation on the screen that I have to interact with. So I have to sort it to the foreground so I can actually see it. Let's double click on that to get centered on that switch, like so. Now, there's my switch. Let's go ahead and move it so eventually I can interact with it here. I'm just gonna bring it over into this space. Just tuck it up in there. And I don't think that's the ideal spot for the switch, but it's quick and easy to access. So now on our switch object here, I do have to add a few things. First off, I have to add the actual switch script. That was one of the items that you imported, so let's type in switch, and there's the script for it. And then um, we're going to add another thing before we start tackling these game objects here. We're going to go ahead and add on a collider. And this is for my player to interact with. And this collider, we can go ahead and edit it so that um, we can see what's going on here. And uh, Sometimes you might want to size that down a little bit. It depends on how much you want the switch to be part of your scene. And last thing, I want to make this a trigger. That way when my character actually bumps into it, it's going to trigger the script, um, which is in fact going to trigger the switch counter. And like I said, they're all inter interrelated here. So now we've got the necessary elements on our switch. The next thing is, is that we want to actually drop in some prefabs here of the switch on and switch off. And let me show you what we'll do for that. I'll walk through those steps right now. Let's go ahead and start with switch on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this in here as an object. And let's get it onto its own layer here. And like so. Alright, and now I'm just going to call this switch capital O and there we go. Switch on. Now Let's get the other one on here. Uh, let's drag that on here, like so. Now this switch is actually, if I can get that out of there, there we go. This switch is actually going to be switch off. And I'm going to want to do something really quick here, otherwise it's going to be annoying the rest of the time. Switch on, let's go ahead and sort it to the foreground and switch off. We're going to sort that to the foreground too. Otherwise, we would make these into prefabs and we would never even see them. that would be super annoying. Anyway, switch on. Let's start with that one. We're going to go to our prefabs folder. I already have these in here, but you may or may not. And we may want to update these with new switches anyway. So I would just grab this game object at this time, drag it in here, and it's going to create the prefab of it. Okay. I'm not going to do that because I already have my prefabs. You will want to do that for the switch on and the switch off. We want prefabs of both of these. Okay. Once you have the prefabs, and I'm going to delete these out of here because I don't need them. You don't need them anymore, so you can delete yours out of there. 
Now what we can do is with the switch, our original switch that we positioned over here so that we can actually interact with, that switch has got the switch script on it. And it needs a prefab of switch on and switch off. Okay, So I'm going to grab right out of the prefabs folder and drag that on here. Switch on and then switch off. Now this switch is all set up. I mean it should be interactive with my character, it should interact with my switch UI, and I should be able to see everything that's going on. So, now moment of truth here. We're going to go ahead and hit play. And right now you can see my switch counter switched to zero. I've got my switch out there. We'll talk about the switch counter in just a second. I'm going to run over here and interact with the switch and you can see that it triggers from red to green so it is now active. Now the question is what's wrong with my switch counter? Let's go back with that. It's a really easy fix and I'm actually kind of glad that I forgot that. Let's go back to game manager and on the game manager in the game manager script you can see that there is a switches drop down and that there is a size thing. Now the size is actually a reference to how many switches are on your scene. So once I hit one, it's going to create an element for that switch. So it says right now that there's no switch in there. Let's grab my one switch that's on my scene, go back to game manager, and grab that one switch and drag it into element zero here. So now you can see it's populated with that game object and I am ready to go here. Um, let's push play. There we are. And the switch counter says one, like it's supposed to. My current switch is not active, which means that I've got to activate it here. So I'm going to bump into it, and you can see that it's triggered. It turns green, and my switch counter goes to zero. Hey, that's good stuff. So let's look at the next steps here. We've got uh, our game manager. We've got a switch UI, which we can see the switch count on, and then we've got the actual switches. Now before I go too much farther, there's one little shortcut thing that'll speed everything up quite a bit, and I think you'll appreciate it because then you won't have to create this. I've got one switch. Let's imagine that we had like three or four switches on there, and I'll show you what I mean. If I go back over to my game manager, drop in like, uh, let's say I've got four switches in my, uh, in my level. Now I've got four different elements that I've actually got to have in there, and I would have to drag in each one of these switches. It would be immensely annoying, and uh, that's why we're going to make a prefab of our switch. So I'm going to take the switch, which now has everything on it that it needs, and I know that it's working, and I'm going to take that, and I'm going to drag it into my prefabs folder. Sorry, I clicked on it twice there. And I would drag it down here into my prefab folder, and that will create a prefab for me. Um, and you can see I already have one in there. It's called switch and it's got everything on there. Now I can start naming these to keep track of them. So let's say this is switch two. Okay, switch two. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at that. Uh, the sorting layer says that it's on default. That's interesting. Oh, this was my previous one that I didn't have sorted. Um, yours will be automatically set to foreground because you had sorted that layer before you made it a prefab. Just to clear that up. So you won't have to do that every step. Now, I've got another switch in there, and I can start dragging more and more switches into my scene. Whichever, however many I drag in, of course, I always have to go back to that game manager object, and I have to say, okay, switch one is element zero, and then switch two is element one. And then I'd drag in switch three and switch four, and then I'd be all set for my four switches. And I think you get the point here. This is a good time to break. In the next tutorial, what we'll be looking at is we're going to create the doors. Uh, so we'll have an open door, a closed door, a locked door, and we'll create the block that keeps you from going into the door before you activate it. And then eventually what will happen is we will create a new scene element that allows you to go to the next level. And <laughs> we're going to have a fully functioning game now that we can jump between levels. And it's, uh, it's just going to look very appealing here. It's going to have all the elements of a classic 2D platform game. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Red Hawk Media. Bye.